Uh, welcome back my dear friends and dear students. Uh, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. And as you know this is the DADM which is data analysis and, and, and decision making uh, one course under the NPTEL MOOC series and this is a 12 week course total uh, number of lectures is 60 which is of 30 hours total duration. And we are in as you can see on the slide we are in the 44th lecture which is the last but one lecture in, in the ninth week. And um, uh, this each week as you know we have uh, uh, five lectures each being for half an hour. And my name is Raghunandan Sengupta from the IME department IIT Kanpur. So, if you remember we were discussing about utility theories and, uh, and concept of utility, expected utility, how these things can be considered and we are gi given an example that utility theory for to find out the expected value there are basically two fronts which needs to be understood. One is basically the functional form of the utility and one is the corresponding probability. So, one is basically consider one is a, a simple random variable it has a function g of x or x or g of w or w whichever way you, you define and you have the functional form the pdf of the distribution for uh, the utilities the preference set. And we saw that for different um, utility functions given uh, different decisions your ranking would change because your expected values are changing. So, consider an, an example for the utility anal analysis of the decision sciences. So, this is the situation is like this a venture capitalist is considering two possibilities of investment. The first alternative is buying government treasury bills which cost rupees 6 lakhs while the second alternative has three possible outcomes the cost of which are accordingly 10 lakhs, 5 lakhs and 1 lakh respectively and the corresponding probabilities of these outcomes are 20 percent, 40 percent, 40 percent. So, that means adding them 20, 40, 40 makes 1 as, as it should be. So, this is basically what when, you are, when I was talking about the PDF, these are the or PMF. In this case, this is a PMF, they are discrete events. So hence, the corresponding probabilities are 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 and the corresponding uh, x values or w values are 10 lakh, 5 lakh, and 1 lakh, but obviously you have to find out the expected value based on the utility. So, what is the utility function based on which you are doing the going to do the calculations. So, this is what you will see let me continue reading. If we consider the power utility function is there and I will discuss what is the power utility function later on which is given by u w is w to the power half then the alternatives would be and the ranking would be accordingly. So, let me uh, first make, make a blank slide and, and write down the values and then we can because this, this whole slide is full of information. So, I do not want to uh, clutter it further. So, there are two slides done. So, we can solve the problems. So, this is the problem. So, the utility function is w to the power half. So, this is the utility function I colored it is yellow. Now, what are the two decisions I will mark it with different colors. So, it is e easy. So, government treasury bills this is the w value and for the other one 10 lakhs with 0.2, 5 lakhs with 0.4, 1 lakh with 0.4. So, these are the two alternatives. So, let me now. So, remember government one is red in color and uh, the um, uncertain event with the three outcomes probabilities are 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 as blue in color. So, it will be easy for me to draw one is red and one is blue. So, let me write the cases. So, this is case one which is for the government one. For the government one you invest some value of w which is equal to if I let me I think it is 6 lakhs right 6 lakhs. So, the corresponding value of u w would be 6 into 
10 to the power 5 square root of that. So, the decision is W is the investment, the probability for U W in this case is equal to 1 and the U W value is given as square root of 6 into 10 to the power 5. So, which will imply expected value for let me write it as case 1 will be equal to square root of 6 into 10 to the power 5 into 1. So, this is the first one. So, that value what it will come is let me mark it here. This is the first order alternative which is coming on to 776. You can do the calculation. So, find out the square root of 6 lakhs and that will come out to be 776. So, the first part is done. Now, I want to do the second calculation. So, second calculation is 10, 5, 1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Blue in color. Case 2. So, what are the alternatives? So, let, let me use blue color. So, the outcomes are 3, 1, 2, 3. What are the probabilities? 0 0.2, let me double check, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. So, the W values, obviously, I will write the UW values. So, w values is given as 10 lakhs, W value is given as 5 lakhs. and W value is given as 1 lakh. So, which will imply the utility, I am only writing U. So, because space is limited. So, it will be utility will be equal to 5, it will imply utility is equal to 5 into 10 to the 5, imply utility is equal to 1 into 10 to the power 5. Now, if I want to find out the probabilities, so if everything is, I will go to the next slide. So, case, so expected value for case 2 is equal to, I will show it and, and so it will be 10, 5, 1. into ok, it will be true. So, what are these? These are the probabilities corresponding to first case. This is the probability corresponding to the second case and this is the probability corresponding to the third case. 0 0.2 plus so, again I will show for no mistake should be done. This value when you add up that will come out to be 609, let me mark it. So, this is the outcome for the second case. So, once you when you are comparing, you will compare 776 with 609. So, the expected value for the first case is more. So, obviously, you take this into consideration. Now, again I will repeat few important things. The probability and utility may be dependent, which is right. So, the utility is w to the power half, it may change depending on the problem formulation and the corresponding probabilities would also change. 
So, when I was talking about expected value, let me change the color of the highlighter. So, when you are trying to basically find out the expected value, I will use expected value of this one. So, remember it will be an integration of u w, this is the random variable multiplied by the the uh, this distribution function of u w or in the other case if it is summation it will be u w multiplied by probability of this. So, this would give me the expected value. Now, remember one thing even though it is not at all to be discussed in this problem and in this course, this is a note. So, let me erase the, the first part of the problem which I am sure you have understood. So, in case if the distribution of x or w is given you can use Jacobian transformation to find out the utility function p d f or the utilization of x and this one which you find out after the transformation are the values which you are going to use here. So, w and x the probability is being um, the random variables probability is being given you can find out the corresponding p d f or p m f for u w and or u x. So, the question would rise that what would happen to the other problem given if would it give it a different answer if we have used a neutral function which consists of w to the power half plus a constant value. So, where c is positive or a negative value. So, if it is a positive value obviously, the ranking would not be much different provided obviously, w would not be negative w to the power half we have already considered it would never be considered negative in the practical sense. So, any positive ranking which you have already done that would not change if you keep adding c in the same quantum to the uh, functional form of the utility. But in case if utility is positive and you basically add a negative of these values then it to, uh, you have to basically check depending on whether utility function is quadratic or non on or linear. So, that would all always hold true corresponding to the utility function form which you have. So, positive value would basically not have any effect. Let us consider a third the example 13. So, in a span of 6 days the price of the security fluctuates and a person making his or her transaction only in the following prices he would be making he or she. So, we consider the utility function is logarithmic. And what we information which you have is that on the first column you have the day, second column you have the price, third column you have the corresponding utility based on the fact that the utility function is logarithmic. Then the fourth column is the number of outcomes from which you will basically find all the probabilities and then the probabilities would be given in the last column. So, our main task would be to find out what is the overall expected value of um, uh, utility. So, given this what you do again? So, these are the values which you have, I will just mark it and again erase it. So, these are the outcomes, so the total value of the outcome is 100. So, the corresponding probability to a utility of 6.91 which is the first value is 0.35, so on and so forth. So, if you go al along the last column, the corresponding probabilities are 0.2 for 6.8, 0.1 for 6.86, 0 0.15 to 6 corresponding to 6.96. 0 0.05 corresponding to 6.83 and 0 0.15 corresponding to 6.93. So, the probability obviously they should sum up to 1 and then if I need to find out the expected value it will be like this. I will basically also so I am going to multiply these. multiply the corresponding values. So, it will be 6 point oh my mistake my mistake.
the third column and the last column. So, these are to be multiplied. And the values are coming out to be If you add them up, that value comes out to be 6.91. And if you have a utility function u to the power p to the power 1 fourth, which is here, let me use a highlighted different one, which is here. So, you basically change the utility functions which would change in this in this place. So, the corresponding changes would be here. I am removing this removing this also for the time being. So, if I the values of the utility would change probabilities remain the same. So, in this case the probabilities and the expect and the probabilities change multiply this utility of the property for p to the power 1 fourth and calculate the value comes out to be 33.63. Now, we will come to the important property of non satiation. So, the first restriction placed on the utility function which we will be considering is that more would be preferred to less, which means the decision means that the, that between two certain uh, two certain decisions or, uh, or two certain decisions in the sense that there are two uncertain one, but these are the two ones which you have in front of you. We will take the one with the largest outcome and we will continue and that is one point one and point number two is that as you can keep increasing the wealth technically we will assume that the utility will also increase. So, we will basically want more and more as the wealth increases. Mathematically when you solve obviously it would mean that the first derivative would be would be greater than 0 as here it is. So, the concept of condensation would be that the first derivative is greater than 0 that means more I give you more you want. So, that would be one of the um, building block based on which you will be basically doing the calculations. Second property, if you consider the decision maker perception of absolute risk. So, he is risk averse, he is risk averse, loves risk or hate risk whatever or indifferent. Then we will basically club that human being having any one of these three properties which is risk aversion that means I want to basically run away from risk. Risk neutral means an indifferent whether risk is increasing decreasing it does not bother me. Another case would be uh, the third one would be where I will run towards the risk in order to uh, take more more and more risk. So, obviously that will depend on what is my risk and return profile and that would come basically from the concept of the non satiation and the concept of risk property. So, let us consider a simple gamble which is known as the fair gamble. Why fair? Because you have in one case you have the unbiased coin probabilities are half and half and in another case you have a coin where the probability is 1 unbiased coin. Now, you consider that if you invest 1, 1 unit and that 1 unit, 1 rupee, 1 dollar, 1 yen, 1 dirhams, 1 Canadian dollar, I am not going to that detail that will come later on. You investing 1, I will basically get in the case when there is a probability when the head comes I get uh, an outcome of 2 in that scaling of 2 units and if it a tail comes I do not get any uh, feed any return. And case 2, if I basic, which is a bias coin, if I invest 1 or basically an input 1 unit, I get the same input back 1 unit. And I am not talking here anything about to do with the utility. Consider it is intrinsically al already there. Now, if and when I am trying to basically compare these two uh, decisions, so obviously my main task would be to compare them considering the expected value. So, if I have the expected value, what I would do? I will find out the expected value for the case 1 and compare it with the expected value of the case 2. 
what is the expected value for case 1? Case 1 expected value would be 2 considering that the utility for the first arm into half that is the corresponding probability for that uh, utility outcome plus the value of the utility of the second arm which is 0 multiplied by corresponding probability of that arm which is again half. So, if it is 2 into half plus 0 into half you will basically have a total out output expected value as 1. And in the next case in the case 2 if you do not invest obviously the corresponding probabilities would be um, do not invest in the sense that I invest one I, I get back the same amount in that, in that sense. Probability is 1. So, in, in that case I invest um, uh, 1 and get back 1 the expected value is 1. So, in, in, in case 1 I am initially investing 1 the outcomes are 2 and 0. So, it is like this. So, I invest 1 probability of half I get 2, probability of half I get 0. So, obviously the expected value would be 2 into half plus 0 into half and case 2 when I have I invest 1 I get back Zero. I invest uh, one, and I get back one. Probability is one. The expected value is equal to one into one. So both the expected value are same. Now, if I am indifferent, which means I am I am risk neutral. If I want to prefer the risk, I will technically mean that I want to, I'm, uh, I am a risk lover person. If I want to basically take the deterministic event. So, which means that I am basically trying to run away from the risk which is a risk avoider. So, risk neutral person, risk taking person, risk neutral I and mean, risk uh, avoiding. So, risk I want to take risk means I will go for the uncertain event. Indifferent means I am indifferent I am in indifferent to any of these two decisions. I can either take the first one or the second one or vice versa. And in the third case, if I want to basically be sure, I want to reduce my risk, I will basically take the take the second decision where, it is, where the probability is 1. Now, the general properties of the utilities considering the functional form. So, when I am basically risk averse, it would technically mean that the corresponding probability probabilities for uh, the expected values remain the same. What is more important to note is that the perception based which the decision is changing would depend on what type of person he or she is, whether he wants to love, whether he or she wants to risk, is indifferent to risk and basically is wants to basically take risk. So, in the case when I want to basically avoid the risk, it would mean that the so called expected value of the sure event that general then return for the person who wants to run away from the risk would be much more than the case when the event is basically a, a non-deterministic one. Which means the utility of investment 1 multiplied by its corresponding probability plus and there are two arms remember utility of investment 2 multiplied by the probability of investment 2. In this case the expected value from here from the arm which is non-deterministic that total value to the person who is a risk averse person would be less than the certainty event. So, technically the expected values may be same, but the overall judgment based on which he or she is trying to find out that which value will give higher returns, which value will go give low returns, he or she will be more attracted towards the sure event that is why she he or she is a risk averse person. In the case when the second bullet point when the pace is basic play person is basically indifferent whether take the, the certainty value sorry my, my mistake whether take the sure event, whether do not take the sure event and what is the expected value so on and so forth. So, if the person is indisposed um, in, in, in this case the person is inclined indifferent to both of these decisions which would mean that the expected value of the arm which is giving me the, the deterministic event which is on the right hand side that will be u of the d i which is the deterministic investment into 1 would be equal to the expected value of the non-deterministic event which will be u 1 into p 1 plus u 2 into p 2 
and that value should be basic exactly match with respect to the shear event. So, that is that is the perception the pers person is this neutral. And finally, for the third case if the person wants to take the risk the fact would be that the expected value of the non deterministic values so called intrinsic uh, expected value would be more than the expected value of the shear event. Hence, the person will be attracted to take the decision which has non-deterministic uh, non concept into the picture. Hence, the person would be seeking the risk because trying to basically take the risk he or she thinks that in the long run the average return would be much higher. So, the first person who is discovers is thinking of only on the downtrend, second person is indifferent and the third person is mainly, mainly thinking of the upward trend. Another characteristics by which to classify risk averse, risk neutral and risk seeking person is by this. So, now what we when you want to analyze in the first case the non cessation is always true whether you want to love the risk, whether you are indifferent to risk or whether you are hating risk. But the actual property based on which you can analyze whether the person is a risk averse person, whether the person is a risk neutral person, whether the person is a risk loving person would basically come from the second derivative. So, the second derivative of the utility function if it is so there can be three things from the marginal rates the first rate. So, the, the first the rate can be increasing at an increasing rate, rate can be increasing at a, as a constant rate and rate can be increasing at a decreasing rate. So, based on that when I basically want to do the stud studies then obviously, I will come to the second moment. So, the second moment if it is positive it means that is increasing at an increasing rate. So, hence the person if you see here is a risk seeker because more I give more you want risk. If the second derivative is in increasing at a constant rate then obviously, the person is risk neutral I will come to these details in, in very simple diagrams. And the third person the third case would be the person basically wants to avoid this to so his overall decision would be I will increase my overall utility, but I will increase it as a, as a lower rate that means it is increasing at a, at a decreasing rate in that case the person would basically be discovered. So, I will basically continue discussing this in the last class of the ninth week and I will try to slowly basically give examples in a much better concept so that utility analysis is clear to you such so that we can basically proceed for the point of regression and other methods which are there under the multivariate statistics. Uh, with this I will end the class have a nice day and thank you very much.